All right, welcome back to the Range Minded Podcast. This episode, I'm warning you right off the bat, is going to get spicy. I'm going to get emotional. I'm going to get frustrated. You're going to feel my frustration. And that's before I even start monologuing. And that's why I got to open a beverage before we get going. <clears throat> this is a... Uh, this is something that hits a little bit more near and dear to me than some of the other things we've ever talked about before. And we've talked about some pretty heavy topics, right? We've talked about some things that uh, I was emotionally connected to. And this is going to be just one of those episodes. Sorry, this is terrible. Terrible content, right? I'm trying to get a bottle open. All right, before we even start, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present to you... Um, a story, okay? Do you guys ever watch uh, Lego Masters? I don't. I, I can't remember what network has Lego Masters, right? But but uh, if you haven't, uh, you you definitely know what Legos are. If you're a parent, you've definitely probably stepped on something in the middle of the night. But let's just say uh, Lego Masters, right? And and in the, in the show, uh, it's it's a, a contest, right? They bring all these builders in from all over the place. Uh, they have these weekly challenges. These these contestants have to build things out of Legos, create things um, to match the criteria of, of each, uh, of, of each, um, whatever. Like every week is something different they have to build, right? I couldn't think of the word. I want to say contest, but that's not right. Challenge. Every week they have to build something that matches the challenge from the Lego master experts, right? Awesome show. Uh, I, I love Legos and I, and I enjoy watching it. But let's just say you too enjoyed that uh, that content. Like you loved watching Lego Masters, and uh, and and you were deeply, heavily involved in watching Lego Masters, um, and you played with Legos your entire life. Oh, maybe you haven't. Let's just say you, you uh, because of Lego Masters, you you really got excited about Lego, and you started to build with Lego a lot. So let's just say after some time, uh, uh, at some point. Um, the network found out that, that you, this novice, uh, Lego master yourself, um, had been trying to mimic the challenges, uh, that were presented every week. Um, and the network decided to, uh, through, and they found this through, uh, investigation. So let's just say the network, uh, contacted some Lego stores and they found out that you, this novice builder had been purchasing Legos to match, uh, each, each weekly challenge. And you've been doing it just because you enjoy doing it. Okay, that's fine. But the network finds out, and then the network decides to prosecute. They decide to uh, to attack you legally, and tell you that uh, you're you're infringing on copyright or something, uh, and and it's an exorbitant amount of money. And and with this lawsuit, they tell you that uh, when they win, that uh, you will no longer be able to play with Lego. You'll no longer be able to be in a home where Legos are, um, and and you just you have to abandon that hobby indefinitely. Now I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous uh, because it's completely hypothetical and it is ridiculous. But what we're going to be talking tonight, uh, and as I'm recording this, is Sunday the twenty first at what six forty six p.m. is when I started recording this. Well, as the time I read the clock, whatever it doesn't you don't even care about that. I, that that story sounds completely ridiculous, and it should sound completely ridiculous to you. Now, again, this episode is going to be a little spicy. I'm emotionally connected to this content, and it pisses me off. All right, let's jump to something here. Hopefully, I got the right window pulled up. I do. Um. Now let's say instead of uh, instead of Lego, we're talking about a constitutionally guaranteed right. Actually, it's not even guaranteed by the Constitution. A God-given right. Yes, that's right. We're talking about what we always talk about, the two A. So let's just say that uh, instead of Lego, you're building firearms. Now there's a lot of uh, a lot of trash being pushed out throughout the United States and throughout the world, honestly, about these scary ghost guns, right? We we hear nonstop about unserialized firearms and how they're showing up everywhere throughout the entire world, even in other countries, 
that uh, and, and being connected to crime, and they're untraceable. Nobody knows anything about them. How do they get out there? Nobody can find out who the original purchaser is or any of that stuff. So they're dangerous and scary, right? We've we've dealt with this dangerous and unusual content forever when it comes to our constitutional two A right. They they have to create this boogeyman. Okay, so let's let's go back and think. Um, can I? build my own gun for my own personal use. I've built firearms. Yeah, sure. Um, but can I take a chunk of metal or a scrap of plastic and, uh, and configure it in a way that creates it into a firearm? Well, let's just see, uh, let's just see what, uh, the governing agencies say. All right. Does an individual need a license to make, or yeah, to make a firearm for personal use? The ATF says, no. It is not required to make firearms solely for, uh, as long as it's for uh, personal use. However, if you're going to use it to, to sell or to make money, yeah, you need a federal firearms license, which we get. We understand that. This is straight off the ATF's website, right? We understand, the uh, and, and many of us have known this for a very long time, that, yeah, we can absolutely possess firearms. There's nothing wrong with it. We can build our own firearms. Uh, let's see. i got to jump to another window here. It's kind of hard. I need to get another screen, I think. I think that would be a little easier for me. So, <clears throat> why why this? And, well, actually, let's jump to this. Uh, let's see, where is this? I found this article today. This is actually pretty stinking cool, honestly. Uh, let's do this again. All right, so I found this. This is um, St. Mary's University is where I pulled this from. And it talked about the history of making firearms in the United States. Uh, for personal use. And this was done, you can see here up on the top corner, there's 2023, so it was just last year. Um, actually, never mind, it looks like this. All I have to do is look a little farther. <laughs> no, November 10th, 2021 is when this article was written. Uh, and this is a report from St. Mary's uh, University about uh, uh, about self-made firearms. Has it been part of the American tradition? Uh, I have said more than once that, yeah, the uh, it's been part of America before the United States was, and it, and that's true. So according to this report, I'll just read this first paragraph here. Since the earliest colonial days, Americans have been busy manufacturing and repairing arms. The colonies had the ability to defend one's, uh, in the colonies, the ability to defend one's home and community, hunt, fight wars, and ultimately win American independence depended largely on the ability to produce arms. For the newly independent nation... Arms production was critical to repel invasions and insurrections, and eventually to the Western expansion. Uh, the skill was always valued and in demand, and many Americans made their own arms rather than depending on others. Okay, It's been part of the American tradition from before America. Well, I shouldn't say Since before the United States. I know, because some people be like, well, America was a continent, blah, blah, blah. You're right. You're right. Sorry, geography nerd. Since before the United States was, the citizens of this country have been manufacturing arms for their own defense, for their own uh, means of uh, procuring food, and ultimately securing freedom. Hi history, text, and tradition all meet this criteria. Now, where does that phrase come from? History, uh, text and tradition. Well, that comes from Bruin, right? We understand that uh, Nicerpa versus Bruin, uh, Supreme Court ruled that we have to, when courts decide two-way cases, they have to meet the criteria, this test of Bruin, meaning they have to go, if, if there's any kind of uh, gun restriction proposed that has to meet the criteria uh, of something that was done in the past, that it's that we, if we interfere with somebody's constitutional two-way right, we have to prove that it's okay for meeting the criteria defined in Bruin. As I understand, I'm not an attorney. This is not legal advice. Don't take this as legal advice. But this is how I understand it. Okay? All right. So, we've, we've established that through the United States, uh, building one's own firearms for personal use meets the criteria of Bruin. Text, history, tradition. All there. It meets it. We've also notated, I'm told you, this is, I'm going to get spicy on this one. 
I'm already, I can feel my heart rate increasing and it has nothing to do with the extra caffeine, I think. <laughs> if I have palpitations, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Now we've also visited the ATF's own website that said what? You can manufacture a firearm without a federal firearms license as long as it is for personal use only. We've understood that for years. Many of us have followed that guideline for years. So for whenever it was, uh, whenever it was established. Okay, so the, the term of throwing ghost guns and putting it in the same category as traditional firearms because that's what personal use guns are. Is they are traditional use firearms that have been uh, ingrained in the United States freedom in the moniker of freedom since before 1776. They meet the criteria. Traditional firearms are not the same as ghost guns because ghost guns are a made-up freaking term used to trample on your rights. All right, I better, I better calm down because it's going to get more spicy, okay? I want to introduce you to somebody. Somebody who I'm considering, uh, not, I don't, somebody I consider as a friend, okay? Um... I want I want you to meet this gentleman right here. This is my friend, my friend Dexter Taylor. Okay, Dexter, uh, and there's lots of videos out there of him now. I was trying to get him on the show, but I can't now. At least not for a while. We're gonna get into that too. Dexter Taylor lives in Brooklyn. Uh, he's a uh. A nerd, basically. That's what Danny La Dana Lash calls him as a nerd. 30 years experience in tech. He's a programmer. Uh, he, he's a self-proclaimed tinkerer. He's a, a woodworker. He, he loves metal tools. Like he, he, he makes things. He's a builder. He's a freaking genius, by the way. Uh, I was included in part of a space where uh, we learned a lot more about him. Some of his ideas for changing the landscape of firearms training... In a much safer way, the man is an absolute genius. Now, my friend, Dexter Taylor. Uh, he was he in Brooklyn. Like I said, he lives in Brooklyn. Some years ago, discovered that, uh, hey, under federal law, I can legally purchase things, whether that be an 80% lower, which he had several, uh, he could purchase these legally, have them sent to his home legally under federal and then state law had no jurisdiction at this point. Uh, this was uh, previous to 2022. I think uh, I think New York state law on this stuff happened in 21. But anyway, this was still previous to all that. He had manufactured many of his own firearms for personal use. Not once did he share that he was making guns anywhere. Not once did he pose any of these firearms for sale. Not once has this man ever been arrested for anything. At least not that I could find. Squeaky clean, as he defines his record. Squeaky clean. At the point of his arrest in April of 2022, he was in good legal standing or, or good membership standing of the local gun club, which did background checks. No felony record whatsoever. This man, because he was such a nerd, a 2A nerd, a tech nerd, a, again, a mechanical genius, he named every one of his guns. He had a personal connection for, for every one of his guns. Very first one he, he built, he named Alpha. And then he named, I don't, I can't remember all the names of his guns. I'm telling you, I've spoken with this man. Okay, this is not hyperbole. This man is amazing. Uh, in, in the circles that I deal with, I call him the evangelist of freedom because if you ever heard him speak, he is all about freedom. Again, Dexter, never uh, never been arrested. No criminal history. Uh, on the night of, uh, I think it was April 20... I, I, it was in April. April of 22. I can't remember what day it was for sure. He fell asleep listening to an audiobook. Uh, then he was... Uh, Woken up by noises that he heard. A thud. Thinking, oh man, that sounds really close. And then voices, which were not part of the audiobook. And then he noticed lights under his bedroom door. 
lights that he recognized as weapon mounted lights and out of fear thinking oh maybe they got the wrong house uh m- maybe maybe something this is weird so he said hey my name is Dexter Taylor who are you looking for and they said we're looking for you from there he spent one night in uh, in the local precinct jail and then went to Rikers Island uh, which is a jail there in New York State. And he spent, uh, I think he spent that first week at, at Rikers. There he found a, a good solid attorney. And uh, and in this case, which we all believed, we all felt, uh, was a good solid civil rights case. Okay, because it was an absolute infringement on his Second Amendment right. Absolute infringement. Blatant infringement. Okay. Now, Dexter Taylor. Like I said, solid dude. Uh just this last week, I think it was Friday, I think, can't remember for sure. Dexter was found guilty. Now, now with all these charges, he faced up to 18 years federal felony charges. Up to 18 years. Now, I think he was found guilty on all but two of those charges. I, I can't remember. I've heard so many different things. I heard it was 12. I've heard it was uh, 16. I, I need to really dig into and give you a better perspective on that. I told, I'm i emotional about this story, so I, I've, I'm kind of bouncing around on it. So, Mr. Dexter Taylor here. Found guilty. They put here... He, he, he doesn't get to his sentencing until uh, uh, May, sometime May thirteenth, I think, is when his sentencing is, and then we'll find out for sure, like how long he will be spending in jail. But it's a while. It's a while. Now you might say, Steve, he was in New York. Like, uh, you can't have guns in New York. You need licensing in New York, and that's true. That's true. You do. But uh, uh, but at what point do federal freedoms get infringed by state laws? Think about that for a minute. At what point can the state come in and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I know you have the right to say whatever you want on your Facebook feed, but look, we've had to we had to strike down on some of these uh, safe words that you you need to keep saying, and we've deemed your speech unsafe, so you're going to jail." Regardless if Facebook is a private platform, I'm talking state. This is the same thing. Mind you, again, all this stuff that Dexter purchased was previous to the state law change in 2021 in the New York City or New York State. He would, did not break the law. You cannot persecute or prosecute somebody on a law that didn't exist when he did something. There's the first problem here. He did not break any law. Now, he was raided by a task force, both of NYPD and ATF. Uh, now, you might be asking, Steve, how did they get his information? If, if he was not sharing any kind of firearms, uh, any, any of his hobby online, how did they know? That's a great question. So, periodically, uh, the ATF... Disguise, decides, decides to, uh, to squeeze the balls of, of vendors. And it happens frequently, more than it should. They can make the, they can make the life of these, uh, of these vendors or these um, producers, whatever you want to call it, these manufacturing companies, they can make their life very difficult or they can play ball, basically. It's a shakedown. So the ATF says, hey, we need some records of of, uh, of of uh, customers of yours. We need to see stuff. We need to know where these things are going. Now, well, even my dog gets pissed about this, okay? I don't know if you heard that or not. Again, mind you, none of this was illegal at the time of its purchase. So the ATF procures uh, sales records from these companies, and they notice there's a name that pops up more frequently than they feel like that should. And that's Dexter's. So they start an investigation. 
and they decide that Dexter, because maybe, I don't know, was because he's black? Is that why they feared? They thought maybe he was producing guns and, and handing them off to the streets? Boy, that sounds pretty racist, don't you think? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. But all I can tell you is going through their investigation, I'd be willing to bet that they jumped on all of his social media accounts. They scoured the internet uh, w with his name as much as possible. What they would have found is who Dexter really is. They would have heard Dexter speak. I guarantee in the spaces that, that I was in with Dexter on, on Twitter, I guarantee somebody was listening to him and they would have heard, again, he's an evangelist of freedom. And I'm, I mean that sincerely. They would have heard Dexter speak. Now, I understand that they've been following rules and they'll have to do whatever. I get that. There's a lot of yes men in some of these bureaucracies. Okay, let's go. Sorry, I'm, I'm off track. Let's go back to the, uh, the let's go back to the sales records real quick. I want you to think about this because I know there's a lot of you guys out there that purchase stuff online. I, kn I know uh, I, I bought stuff online. Again, Dexter never shared any of this stuff on any of his social media platforms. Okay. Uh, so once they get raided, once he gets raided, ATF looks at stuff and says, hey, it looks like it's all here. I, there's, no, there's no federal uh, noncompliance that we can see. And they bounce, leaving the state and the city of New York to, uh, to do their thing. Now they're seeing these scary ghost guns, non-serialized. I'm sure if they looked there, they would have, they've all been accounted for. They were all there. They seize his property, which has value, by the way. They seize his property. They take his cell phone. They take his computer. They take his hard drives. They take everything. And they scour it. They go through in depth, trying to find anything they can throw at this man. Ridiculousness, my friends. Ridiculous. Again, just, just last week, Dexter was found guilty on these charges. Dexter's a dad. Dexter's an inventor. Dexter is an American citizen. Now you look at what New York is doing to non-citizens. What, what is all the bullshit they're allowing now? Same day bail? Yeah, or, or they arrest these people, or they don't arrest people, whatever. They turn a blind eye to real violent criminals, but they throw Dexter in jail because of ghost guns, traditionally made firearms, text, history, and tradition. Now, you might say, Steve... I don't understand why. what's going on here. He should have been able to really prove his point during the trial. You're right. You're 100% right. <clears throat> and he has a good attorney. But when they started arguing his case, his attorney brings up the Second Amendment, and what happens? The judge immediately strikes him down, not allowing him to use... Anything from the Second Amendment. She said that the Second Amendment has no place in this courtroom. The, uh, what? This is a Second Amendment case. This is all about Dexter's Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Not given by the city of New York not granted by the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., but given by God himself to these citizens. But the petulance of the judge to strike down any communication about the Second Amendment whatsoever, she even told the jury, you are not allowed to, do, to listen to that. That doesn't come into play in this courtroom. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't know if you guys are really feeling the passion in my, my soul about this case. Let me tell you something. Dexter's case could easily be your case. 
This is a big deal. And nobody's talking about it. And it drives me crazy. Okay, I shouldn't say nobody. Few are talking about it. There is a free man who should be free, I should say, sitting right now in Rikers waiting for sentencing to go to a federal penitentiary for exercising a right, enumerated right, from our founding documents. I can hear my children talking. I don't know if you guys can... Sorry, distraction. Um, so what's next? What's next for Dexter? Let me pull something else up here. Let me see if I can find it online. Uh, yeah, here we go. All right. So there's a, there's a few things available for Dexter. So here's a, here's a website that just got posted, literally just got posted minutes before uh, I started recording this. Um, so the website's still a little bit under construction, but it's functioning. Okay, it's functioning. So you can see here, uh, there's a place to donate to his gifts and go. So when, when they seize Dexter's property, when they put him in Rikers that first week, his, his bond or bail was uh, almost a quarter of a million dollars. I don't, I, do you guys have that kind of money sitting in the bank that you can, you can post? Because I sure as hell don't. His mom sold her house and used that money to, to post for him. Now, I don't know what the trial cost. Uh, I, I'm sure we can eventually figure that out. It was actually fairly short. And I'm sure it was a circus. May I say kangaroo in a way. That, that cost him who knows how much. So now he's got his secondary court case. Now he's got his bond that he's got to finish paying off. Now he's going he's gonna to go to the pen. Now here's the thing. He's not a violent man. Uh, I, again, I consider him a friend. I have spoken to him. Peaceful. Humble. God-fearing. Because he's going to be going to prison on gun charges they're probably going to put him in a place where there's lots of violence already for exercising a constitutional right. My hope was to bring Dexter on the show after trial went well, where he can speak as a totally free man and share his story. But that's not going to happen, at least not for a while, unless something drastically changes. I was not speaking in hyperbole when I said Dexter's case is our case. Because if it can happen to him, it can happen to any of us. Now, I know Dexter's going to go through the appellate process. I get that. And he should. In the mind of many of us in the 2A community, this is cut and dry, straight up, uh, non, uh, like this is ridiculous. <laughs> I, I don't, I, it's unconstitutional. It is disgusting. But we need to learn something from Dexter's case. First of all, before we, before we talk about what we need to learn, I need you to share this video. I need you to share Dexter's story. I want you to show this. Let me show this, uh, his website again. Okay. Free text, free Dexter Taylor.org. Again, this, this website's just a work in progress. It's getting there. Share it. We need everyone to see and hear and get to know Dexter. I want you to share it with your state representatives so when they go to Washington, they can start pushing pressure on, on, on federal rogue agencies and states that are pissing on our Constitution. I 
I want you to take this to your gun rights organizations. I want you to contact the NRA. I want you to talk, uh, contact GOA and uh, FPC. Well, again, your states' rights groups. It's a travesty of justice that just took place. Here's a funny thing. Dexter, right? Black American. Where's the where's the civil rights groups on this? Where's the ACLU? Where's the where's the black rights groups? Where, where are they? This man's civil liberties just got trampled on blatantly by the city of New York. Letitia James, by the way, this is her court. Blatantly anti-gun. I need you to share this with everybody. This is a call to action. While we're here, let me show you his, uh, his give, send, go again. I, I want you guys to take a good look at this, please. Okay. Dexter Taylor to a legal fund. Now, honestly, uh, by the just from me preparing the show, uh, let's see, where does it show the totals? Uh, it's gone up like two grand since since I started recording the show, which is awesome. Is awesome. If you can, I understand if you can't afford to. I need you to donate. Uh, Dexter went by Carbon Mike on Twitter. Uh, his neighbor's now in control of, uh, as far as I understand, in control of that account. I want you to follow that account. I want you to show your support to Dexter on his own account. Uh, we, we've, uh, we, a group of us, <laughs> of us Twitter nerds, I guess. Um, we've come together, and, well, I didn't do much. <laughs> I'm just kind of riding coattails, I suppose. Uh, we've we've been using hashtags a lot. One of them is I stand with Dexter Taylor. The other is free Dexter Taylor. Search those hashtags. And it, anytime you come across a story like this or a, a um, content like this where we're sharing Dexter's story, I want you to use those those hashtags. We need to flood everywhere. This this should be everywhere. The problem is here too. Guess what? Dexter's not alone. He's not the only one that's uh, that's suffering the wrath of an anti-gun president. Of an extremely anti-gun administration. Creating these boogeyman arguments about ghost guns and gun violence. You, you need to be more involved, please. It hits a little bit different when you know the person that's sitting in jail. It hurts a little deeper when you know a guy that did nothing wrong that's facing scary, scary times. Dexter's case is our case. Dexter's story is our story. I stand with Dexter Taylor. I'm not going to monologue. I'm not going to do a bunch of other stuff. That's it. That's the show. If you like what I've shared, again, please share it with others. This story needs to get out. I could share with other things I've learned lately on Twitter. There's a young man named Brendan from Philly that's facing some ridiculous stuff. Well, he just came through some of it. But the anti-gun sentiment across the country is getting worse. Your civil rights are getting trampled on. Don't give up the fight. The first three words in the preamble of the Constitution is what? We, the people. We are the power. We are the government. We've just chosen to send certain people as mouthpiece to stand in our stead that we haven't been 
controlling, I guess. <laughs> I don't know the right word. We've allowed them to, to play games that sh we would never do if we were there. The time to stand up is now. We're seeing uh, anti-gun legislation sweeping, right? Colorado just passed an assault weapons ban, and they're working on other stuff, by the way, in the state of Colorado. These anti-gun laws are meant to be replicated in every state. We need to get in front of them now. Get involved with your local leadership representation. I hate the term leadership. They're not our leaders. They're our representation. Get involved. Start at the school board level. Start at dog care. I don't care. Start at the bottom. Start at your local level. Get involved. Get to know who represents you in the state. Hold them accountable. Make your voice heard. Get involved with your two-way, your state two-way rights activist groups. Get involved. You know, I, I talk bad about the NRA, but at least it's something. If you're comfortable putting money towards the NRA, that's fine. You can do whatever you want. But don't let it stop there. Hold them accountable. Make your voice heard. Join other 2A groups, rights groups out there. There's a lot. Some of them are doing a great deal. Dexter um, uh, is uh, the National Association of Gun Rights is, is helping Dexter. They're deeply involved. Excuse me. They're deeply involved in his case, which is great. But other organizations need to know too. Talk to them about it. If you're donating to those groups, ask him about Dexter's case. Because his case is your case. The world is in torment. torment. The country is wounded deeply. We have to get this figured out. We have to get in front of it now. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all you do for the show. Please like, share, comment, whatever you need to do. My goal is to, uh, <laughs> is to make this something much bigger than it is. I've been doing it a while. It's time to make the show much bigger. And I can't do it without you. If you're willing to help out, that's great. There's uh, there's places on my link tree that you can help out. You can jump to the website, any of that stuff. You can find me on all sorts of social media platforms. The easiest way is either go to the website and you can do diverse, di diverse, no, disperse to those other like social media platforms from there. Or you can jump on Instagram. You can find my link tree and you can go that way too. It's all good. Love you guys. Be safe out there. Don't compromise on your rights. And I stand with Dexter Taylor.